What is going on you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by Galadon Gaming. Yes, we're back to Clash Royale and yes, we're back on TV. Six more times Galadon YouTube clan members have made it on TV Royale. It's crazy. These guys are all over the place now. We do have a lot of members of Galadon YouTube clans. But these guys also seem to have deduced the formula that gets you the TV Royale fame. Although, well, let's just say it's not the most exciting of battles when you really look at the actual battle. Here we've got Jake, who is level 8. He's dropped all the way down to face a level 3 player. And obviously, these guys are creating artificially close battles. By dropping down, they can control the action, get that opponent's King's Tower just about down, and then lose to the lower level player. That one, a five level disparity. This one was much, much closer. Here we've got EST Daniel, who is only one level above his opponent. And he has again kind of controlled the action, gotten the King's Tower down to just 43 hit points, and then the opponent is going to get in there and take the King's Tower down, winning three crowns to one, and Daniel gets the replay on TV. But here is another one. We've got Readable 782, and again, it's a level 8 versus level 7 player. But Readable has worn down the King's Tower to 33 hit points, and then he is going to let his opponent overwhelm him as it looks like he's trying, well, maybe not. 33 hit points, could have dropped the Zap spell. You see he has it ready, or the arrows. Either one would have won the battle for him instead. The opponent is going to get those troops in towards the King's Tower. And I love this touch, the arrows. The arrows would have won the battle in midair, and that may have been part of what got that replay on TV. Now, obviously, we have some numbers that we crunched in the previous TV Royale episode. We know that it's more likely that a replay that ends up with a three crown win is going to show up than a one crown win. But check this out as Biggest has got his opponent down to three hit points. Obviously, there is some sort of formula for that as well. Just three hit points away from the victory, but the opponent, much lower level again, wins. And another Galadon YouTube member ends up on TV Royale. Now also, there is obviously something to be said for unusual cards like the Expo, but again, I do have to remind you guys that there was an incentive that I've put up there. I've been offering a $10 US iTunes or Google Play gift card to anybody that ends up on TV Royale who is in a Galadon YouTube clan that has the same icon and description as my original Galadon YouTube clan, and people seem to have taken up the challenge, and there are more than a thousand members of Galadon YouTube clans out there trying, apparently, to get on TV. It's just a matter of when we will see one that gets on TV naturally without having to drop, without having to intentionally make the battle artificially close, like we've seen here again and again and again. Right now, we are coming to the close of my favorite Gallant on YouTube TV Royale replay of all time. Impossibly close, Manectric Savage launches the fireball at the King's Tower that has 17 hit points left and somehow times this down to within one frame of losing. Right here, the fireball lands. It looks like he's got the win, but actually the opponent has gotten the Goblin Barrel in a split second sooner and the opponent wins right as the fireball impacts. Impossibly close. It does not get any closer than that. It's no wonder that this one ended up on TV Royale. Now, as close as these battles might be, I do feel like TV Royale is truly meant for the genuinely close battles, the ones where it's an equal struggle of skill between two similarly matched players that just go at it and things come down to the final seconds. And that is exactly what we are going to look at right here. Now, Gallant on YouTube clans may have the ability to claim that they've been on TV more than anybody else, but we have to remember that the true purpose of TV Royale is to display these skilled battles. And that's why it's good that it's not going to ever be dominated by those silly battles like that. You have to remember that probably millions, millions upon millions of battles happen in Clash Royale every single day and only one replay per hour is being chosen per arena. So the odds against getting on TV Royale are astronomical. And out of these millions and millions of replays, we've had just about a half a dozen show up out of Gallant on YouTube clans. But also remember that there are nearly 1,200 new replays every single week on TV Royale, one an hour for eight different arenas. 
So while the odds are long against getting on TV Royale, there are always going to be replays that you can watch to help give you strategy pointers. It is like a convenient YouTube video right there on TV Royale. You can look for a deck maybe that's similar to the one that you're playing if you want to learn how to play a specific card. And again, remember, you don't have to watch the entire replay. If you go in and watch the first few seconds and then leave, when you go back to TV Royale, you will be able to see the outcome. So more than seeing a specific deck win, you can also look for, say, a Royal Giant deck that lost and see exactly what the opponent did to counter that Royal Giant. So yes, there is a lot to be learned on TV Royale, but <clears throat> it's no replacement for a good commentary, say, on a YouTube video that helps break down the strategy and talk about exactly what the player was thinking and what strategy they were using each moment of the battle. But again, it's a good reference, and I am super happy that TV Royale is there. Not to mention, it gives YouTubers like us a chance to check out some amazingly close battles. Although at this point, in this one, it does look a little bit lopsided. Royal Giant Hog Rider deck against a very common Hog Rider Cycle deck and the opponent with the poison spell has lost a tower already, trying to fight back with 40 seconds left. The fireball taking out the hog rider, but again, that musketeer, oh so dangerous. Such an underrated damage dealing card. She single-handedly finishes off that tower and ties up the battle 1-1. So it turns out to be a very close match and both players doing a great job of countering the opponent's pushes. But of course, both players have lost a tower. And I do believe pretty firmly that seeing 2-1, 3-2, 3-1 victories is definitely much more exciting than a standard 1-0 crown win. And that is probably why we see more of these on TV Royale. So you know this one is going to come down to the wire. It's already going into overtime, and I would also guess that that is another factor that is taken into account. Any battle that goes into overtime is bound to be close, is bound to have some back and forths during the battle. And here we go, 50 seconds left into overtime. It looks like the Royal Giant and the Barbarians are getting to that right tower, but the Hog Rider has gotten to the left tower, and both opponents suddenly just tearing down that second tower, and it looks like this battle is going to end quickly. 230 hit points left on that right crown tower. 30 seconds left into overtime. Chuck D has cycled all the way around to the fireball and he is ready to unleash it with the intention to end this battle. But wait, those of you who know a level seven fireball know it does 229 damage, leaving one hit point and Chuck D loses the match by the narrowest of margins. So there you have it, TV Royale, always entertaining to watch, but <clears throat> it's, it's, no, it's no replacement for YouTube. Thank you guys, as always, for spending a few minutes of your day with me. Now be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe for daily Clash content, and we will see you all back here again tomorrow. Same gal time, same gal channel, for more full attacks. Gallidon, are you okay mate? You sounded a bit constipated at the end of that episode. <laughs>